very involved in the kids. So he would not care that she's not, my mum's not really paid him much attention and stuff. But other men, I have uncles like this where they really seek attention from their wife and they get like, play with me, be with me kind of vibe. And um, so I, everybody's different, but it does depend on their level of self-esteem and their pre-existing traumas. You mentioned porn. Mm -hmm. How much does that fry men's like brains and dopamine? Uh, I, I've been speaking about this a little bit recently, but my end goal from whatever it is that I've created on social media is to really, really undo some of the prevalence of porn because there's no one factor that destroys a man's manhood more than pornography. This is what men, why it does it. Yeah? The first thing it does is, of course, it creates unrealistic expectations, which we all know. But the problem with that is, is it's causing early impotence. By the time a man is 27 now, he has seen more pornographic images than the average like 90 year old man he's seen more nudity so what happens and more extreme versions of nudity so what happens is it starts mild and then but if you're starting at 10 how much mild porn can you watch that's the average age of when they start yeah astaghfirullah uh, god forbid yeah that's the average age now if you're starting at 10 watching pornography how much casual pornography can you watch by the time you get to 15 it turns into something else and by the time you get to 20 it turns into something else by the time you get to 30 it turns into criminal behavior yeah it turns into so what happens is the average woman can no longer stimulate you and you find yourself having erectile dysfunction but the bigger issue i feel like it causes men is they no longer feel like they need to work on the skills and the attributes it takes to attract a woman before, to have sex with a woman or to see her naked, a man would have to be like, right, I have to have money, I have to be successful, I have to be kind, I have to be caring, I have to be masculine, I have to be all of these um, amazing things that makes him a man. And then he'd clear up. So like the Elvis Presley's days, a man would have to be all of those things to get a woman. Now it's like, I'm really craving a woman, I'm overweight, I haven't got a job, I'm playing video games all day, but I'm, I'm, I'm horny, let me just watch porn. Whereas before it would be like, get yourself up, come on, go talk to women. So they're losing the drive of what makes them masculine. So they become more and more uh, uh, emasculated and they become a weaker version of themselves every time they watch it because they can satisfy themselves without working on themselves. It's a lot of cheap dopamine. It's being very cheap. And but also sex. very, very dangerous dopamine. Of course. Mm. But I think like, so I've given up alcohol for the last 10 and a half months. Oh, I've never tried alcohol in my life. No way. No. Well, you know, just an angel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Like you, you've you've never known the other side of it. No. But like I always said it's like I'm a... Uh, I'm so, so impressed by people who give it up though. Even though I've never tried it, the people that give it up are the ones that have to face so much peer pressure and they have to really go against the grain. Whereas for me, nobody pressures me because they know I'm never going to try it. But mm -hmm. see, the thing for me, so the reason why it was a little bit easier for me is because yeah. I'm literally in the middle of Asia on my own. It's me, my girlfriend, my dog, Aww. a lot of my like network are a lot older mm. so for my podcast like a lot of my friends could be like 40 50 you know, 27 mm. so it's fine and we go for dinner and they'd be like oh do you want like this like four thousand dollar like glass of wine i'm like i'm okay you know oh. so it's fine but of course i've come from like irish culture I yes. did, i'm no angel like as in i've been to like every event in ibiza you can never you uh, can name it right stop. <laughs> but over the course of like six years from like say 19 to 24 25 yeah. i had my party days mm -hmm. and now i'm kind of in the building phase of what i would say and like fixing all that kind of shit yeah but those cheap dope means are so easier to lean into so drink obviously there's like sex mm -hmm. drugs all that kind of stuff involved yeah. as well how would you recommend someone to kind of clear their mind from all that well here's what alcohol does it's pseudo confidence and what again here's the goal of a man should be to have a natural element in him that enables him to be masculine now when you take alcohol what it does is i mean I, i've never tried alcohol but what i have noticed about myself comparatively to my friends who drink is that i'm not waiting for something to kick in before i start being me i'm not waiting for a drug to sink into my body for me to be authentic i'm not waiting for it to sink in for me to start dancing i'll walk into an environment if there's music on i'm like ready to roll because and my friends are like let me just let this sink in i'm like let what song is sinking like, let me just and i'm like it's so foreign to me i'm just like what are we waiting for this song is good but it's like what happens then when you do that is you numb your authenticity 
Mm-hmm. You numb your ability to be confident without it. You numb your ability to say what you want to say without it. You numb your ability to talk to women without it. So you're numbing your authenticity. You're suppressing who you truly are and waiting for the alcohol to unleash it. But true confidence and true self-esteem and true needs are met when you can be whoever you truly are in the absence of any kind of external um, doses. So when they can finally be themselves, you can only do that when you don't rely on alcohol. And then you know what you truly feel and what you truly like as well. Because what happens is I'll sometimes be with friends and we're in the shittest place, but because they're drinking, they're still they're like, yeah, it's fine, it's fun. I'm like, no, it's not. This place is a dive. Why are we here? They're pretending it's fun because they've got the extra kind of added dose. Mm -hmm. But when you remove that, you can actually experience life authentically. And only when you experience life authentically is a, a life worth living. And I think a lot of it is down to insecurities. And like I said, it's with no sense of superiority. Yeah, I yeah. Like I'm I sure younger, if I could drink, I mean, it's religious reasons, but I'm sure I would be, I'd be the worst if I could drink. But like from what was like kind of so common, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and not like Irish people, just just in general. Is that like when I was younger, probably because I was a bit more, uh, influ- I, was, I was more influenced by people, you know? Yeah. So I'd always have like a gin and tonic in my hand mm-hmm. and I'd always have a cigarette. Oh. So if we're out at an event, I'd always have both hands are occupied. Right. And then when you remove that, you're like, what do I do with these? What, what do I do with my hands? Is it like, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> yeah. So then like, as I like, kind of like stepped away from it, I've become actually way more confident and like, yeah, oh, you, you realize you can dance. You but can I, enjoy but music. But I also have my own, my own interests and yeah. my own like uh, values. So yeah. now I'm like, oh, I don't really need to. So like, for instance, like when I met a couple people here, they all don't drink as well, which is really interesting because like Dubai, like there's mm. lots of people that are pushing really hard. And they're like, yeah, let's just go chill out. But you know why that you coffee. know why that is? Because Dubai's culture is it's very expensive to drink unless you're doing brunches, which makes it very cheap to overdrink. So it's unlimited drinks or very expensive. So people have done brunches and realize how unbearable alcohol, your body's rejecting it. So they get so sick of the brunches that they think my body can't take this anymore. And then they go through the cleanse period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because your body rejects it. Yeah. I think everyone should just do like 30 days and then you see a comparison because you mm. literally, it's like an A-B test. You see mm. what I was and what I am. Mm. And I'm not saying forever. I just think that even for me, I like the fact that I go like month to month and I'm like, Good oh, for you. Month. And I think it's just so significant because like, as I mentioned, like 27 and now quite extroverted, I could do that every every I want to do. Yeah. But I think I have like other goals, which I'm not saying that other people don't. It's just for what I want to do. Mm, but I, I definitely think I attribute a lot of my confidence down to the fact that I can't rely on anything. And your success. I, yeah. And your education. Yeah. But no, yeah. Really, because like, like your psychology degree yeah. from UCL. Yeah, yeah. And you've gone on to other things. Yeah. Like you weren't out getting shit faced. Yeah, I, I mean, it wasn't an option. My dad is, you know, he's Pakistani. That's, that's yeah, great, you know, it wasn't, it's great. Now I love the boundaries because they've enabled me to uh, optimize my potential. Uh, obviously at the time, I was just like, I can't do anything even if I wanted to. So that's why one of the things I always make clear it's not I didn't have a choice when it came to having a really kind of um, kind of non-promiscuous lifestyle is my parents were created it and then it cultivates in yourself and it beca- you internalize it so it wasn't like a choice I made I'm sure if I had the freedom I wouldn't have made these choices but I would say that I promise you you find authenticity when you remove alcohol from your life and you find you realize who you actually enjoy the company of you realize you know when you're talking to a girl in the club and you're fully drunk and she seems so interesting and you're like yeah, yeah yeah I want to take her out and then you go on a date with her sober and you're like this dumb, dumb bitch <laughs> like okay, so this dumb, bitch. dumb bitch and then they call me my friends always call me and they're like oh she's so boring and I was like but you were so drunk when you spoke to her and they're like oh she's not even that pretty I was like you were drunk mm. that's the thing and then imagine how many bad decisions come from that desire to escape your real life through the use of alcohol think of how many children have either been born or aborted just because you wanted a fun night out it's not worth it Hundred mm-hmm. percent. I want to ask you about money. So yes. we're in. Can I have <laughs> some? Do you have any? <laughs> <laughs> we're in obviously like a very like rich yeah. country, rich mm-hmm. area, and even in Singapore as well, it's like very wealthy. Do you think that like females are more drawn towards guys with money? What happens is in cultures where there's lots of money, it attracts beautiful women. Yeah, Uh, because what happens with very beautiful women is they realize how much they can get for free. So they start to clock onto that very quickly. So what happens in cultures like that is that you get super successful men and super beautiful women. And now the uh, uh, money attracts women, absolutely, but it attracts disloyal women. 
Mm -hmm. Money only attracts disloyal women. If you're an old man with lots of money and you're overweight and this, that, and the other, but you're getting lots of girls, you're not getting girls. You're getting girls, you're getting investors, people who want to get money out of you. That's what you're getting. But money only attracts emotionally unavailable women. But looks or even like character or charisma or uh, comedy, all of these things actually attracts connection. Mm -hmm. So yes, money uh, attracts uh, women, just like having a pair of big boobs attracts men. But is that what you want? Do you want to just attract men with big boobs? It's, it doesn't lead to connection. So it's hollow. I've, um, I've seen some studies before. I just like heard them about, you may, have, you may have seen this kind of reference like the uh, the cheerleader and the college jock mm -hmm. reference. So the I actually haven't, so you'll so, have to teach me. Yeah. So the cheerleader, who's the main cheerleader, mm -hmm. she's a cheerleader captain, and you have the quarterback. Right. And when they're in high school, they're like super, super like, you know, popular and everything. Yeah. And as they go on to their career, <clears throat> the cheerleader becomes a lawyer and the Jock. quarterback becomes nothing. He just works at Walmart, drinks mm -hmm. beer all night, plays video games and watches mm -hmm. porn. And then they've kind of diverged out. Mm -hmm. And as a result, then the relationship is at like a unbalance. And yeah. And therefore, like they've grown differently. Have you ever seen kind of references towards that as well in terms of like actual success with like money? Because... If people get together when they're both yeah. quite the same page, but then this guy goes off to make like hundred yeah. million inside a company, he runs all the ego. Everything runs yeah. into it. I see this a lot with celebrities. Um, you know, I, I, it's not like I know millions of celebrities, but you know, I'm I'm quite lucky with my circle, and I see this a lot with footballers. I see it a lot with rappers, and uh, I see it a lot with just athletes in general. What happens is they are encouraged to be with somebody from before the fame. They're really encouraged to do that because they can't trust people. Uh, when they become famous, they don't know who wants them. Everybody's a bit awkward and inauthentic with them. So they're always with somebody from before the fame. But the problem is the person that they chose before the fame and the money and all of those things is she no longer needs to work on herself because she has to be your pillar of strength. She almost puts herself on pause. He is then going on to conquer the world. Now, the problem that happens is when he comes home, there's no emotional or intellectual intimacy. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is if she's been at home cooking and cleaning out, looking after the kids, as beautiful as that is, it has the man that's been closing deals or performing on stage or scoring goals has nothing in common with that because there's been no drive in her day. She can't talk about the peaks and troughs of her day the way he can. So what ends up happening is he's no longer inspired and he's no longer intellectually stimulated. So he doesn't realize that's what it is. He thinks he's just bored of it. But then all it takes is him to meet a girl that works in a top accounting firm and she says something interesting and he glorifies that statement. He's like, oh my God, my wife's never said something so intellectual and they start to become drawn to intellectual intimacy because their days are so stimulating and they can't relate to that bored housewife so that's the problem i do find that's interesting though because i was thinking that like the ceo dude whatever whatever yeah he would not be as interested in the boss babe who's also trying to build her career. Here's the thing. They they don't like the boss babe if it's masculine and rejecting. Yeah, that's what it is. It's not what you do. It's how you make your partner feel. If I'm a boss, but I'm still looking after my man, I'm still kissing him, hugging him, making him feel loved. He's not going to mind that I'm a boss. But if I'm a boss babe and I'm like, oh, I'm not coming home for a couple of days or I'm not spending time with you. That's what they don't like. Mm. That is actually how you're making them feel. But there is something so stimulating and attractive about somebody Else who's at who matches your intellectual level not i'm not talking about financial level intellectual level now if you're having a busy day podcast talking to really intelligent people and then you come home and let's say for example i don't know anything you 